This program is brought to you by Emory University. In all fields, books are published that are milestones. But rarely, every once in a great while, a book is published that represents a true turning point in a field. And De Humani Corporis Fabrica, or On the Workings of the Human Body, by Andreas Vesalius, is really one of those books. It's really rather thrilling to be able to view this book that's over 450 years old and one that has such significance in medicine. It is one of only 60 remaining copies of De Humani Corporis Fabrica. And the book is in such remarkable shape because the pages are not made of wood pulp, but rather of a linen. It feels somewhat like uh, paper money in the United States. It was published in that remarkable year of 1543 when, incidentally, Copernicus published his Orbium Celestium. And to understand why it was such a turning point, we have to go back a little bit into the climate in which Andres Vesalius published this book. For the preceding, oh, about 1,200 years, the authority in the study of the field of medicine came from a single man. The writings of Galen, a man who published his works in the second century. And unfortunately, medicine pretty much followed that for the next 12 centuries. And virtually no progress was made in Western medicine, but to know Galen was to know medicine. In fact, it got to the point where with the church that criticizing Galen was essentially heresy. Now, Vesalius decided that he didn't like the way he was taught anatomy, and he became the first professor of anatomy to do his own dissections. And as he collected a few cadavers and did his dissections, he began to have this disquieting feeling that many things that Galen had described in his texts were wrong. He realized that Galen had never dissected a human, although he never says this in his texts. And Vesalius realized he was inferring animal anatomy as human anatomy. And it was at that point he decided this needed a book. And over the next year, year and a half, he started to develop the first accurate book on human anatomy. He formed a crucial alliance with a, an artist, a protege of Titian, a man named Stephen Jan von Kelkar. And the two of them worked together. Van Kelkar would make these drawings, and Vesalius would write the text. Once they finished the drawings, they took the drawings to woodcutters in Venice, where the best woodcutters of the time uh, were living. And the woodcutters then would make these beautiful woodcuttings that were taken then to the best uh, publisher at the time, which was someone in Switzerland. Remember, this is only about 80 years after the invention of movable type uh, in Gutenberg's Bible. What we really remember about De Humani Corporis Fabrica are the figures. There are 11 full-page plates and over 200 smaller figures that were drawn by the artist von Kelchar. Here you can see a wonderful example of one of the books of the seven books contained in De Humani Corporis Fabrica, this one on muscles. This particular plate is, of course, the skeleton of the human body. Vesalius actually had his own skeleton that he hung by the, the cadaver that he was dissecting, and he used it as a road map. Here you can see remarkable detail and, again, the Renaissance-type background that von Kalkar drew. This is the frontispiece of De Humani Corporis Fabrica. Here you can see the vibrant scene that Andres Vesalius created when he started doing his own dissections. And the artist von Kalkar depicts Vesalius dissecting a cadaver. Here you can see Andres Vesalius, and we know it's Vesalius because we have other portraits of him. And he is dissecting a human cadaver. You can tell this is very early on in the dissection because there was no preservation of human cadavers at the time. They were usually executed criminals. And you had to start in the abdomen since that was the first area where things might decay. 
So you can see he's dissecting the abdomen, and this is the very beginning of this and is generating great excitement around him. Interestingly, however, there are a number of aspects that you can see. His skeleton, the thing that he used for a guide to know where he was uh, dissecting or where he should dissect, is depicted in the scene. In addition, you can see someone who represents the clergy, a way of the artist saying to the world that the church has, in fact, has condoned this use of human cadavers uh, for purposes of study. In fact, the church found that it was actually in its best interest to allow certain groups of people, notably physicians and artists, to do human dissection. In addition, there are some other scenes that show the barber surgeon that had previously been doing dissections is no longer needed and you can see this individual now just sort of languishing under the cadaver's table. Finally you can see off to the right an animal here which von Kelkar, if we look very carefully has actually depicted as having a human foot. Another dig at Galen to show that he had inferred human anatomy from animal anatomy. I think the real significance of this book was that it really debunked for the first time Galenic anatomy. It really inspired scientists over the next several centuries that this blind allegiance to the authority of Galen was something that needed to be reconsidered. That observation, believe in what you can see was the watchword that Vesalius worked by. And it changed everything in medicine. Medicine began to move forward because of this particular book. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.